Well, we're here with the, the team behind Farmer Veteran. Um, guys, introduce yourselves. I'm Jeremy Lang, I'm director. I'm Alex Blair, director, cinematographer, both of us also. So how did you first encounter Alex? I mean, where did this start from? So this started that I was working with a nonprofit in North Carolina doing outreach with farmers, and mm -hmm. I had done a radio story about a farmer veteran in California. So when I met Alex through my job at the time, I had like the realization that it, there had been a story about a farmer veteran that was very powerful. So I was like, oh, here's another veteran starting a farm. This could be the beginning of something good. And then our producer, Dale Anderson, was um, bringing together different documentarians in Durham, because Durham is a very awesome hotbed of documentary action with Southern Documentary Fund and the Center for Documentary Studies. And so DL connected me with Jeremy, who had been doing lots of veteran work, mm. and we began the film. There's a lot of um, Duke connections and that whole, you know, can you talk a well, bit about that? Is yeah, that the Center for Documentary Studies uh, is part of, is uh, affiliated with Duke University. I can't quite remember what their arrangement is at this point. But, uh, <laughs> so there's always been a community of documentarians of all sorts, you know, um, Boral, still photography, film there. And then the Full Frame Festival mm -hmm. is also associated with the Center of Documentary Studies and Duke University. So there's that sort of uh, community there, as well as the Southern Documentary Fund, which was another, which was our fiscal sponsor for the film. Um, sort of helps to facilitate a lot of other documentaries. It has films. created, though, something really special. There's not really anywhere else in the country that has that focus. Like, as much as it with the university special. backing, it feels yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Duke has definitely thrown a lot, you know, has been really supportive of the Center of Documentary Studies, and they, in turn, have sort of pushed a lot of that. And all of us with the, with the film have taken classes there. Some, I mean, that's how I was first connected to DL, was through the Documentary Center. And so it's like a nice family. It's like a blue, blue devil logo in the back somewhere. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> not, not that we wouldn't have it. But. Right. So I'm kind of curious, photography background, you've obviously done a lot with audio and radio making a film. Like, when did y'all connect into We've got to get Alex on the screen. Um, so, as as Alex was saying, DL runs Vittles Films, which mm -hmm. is uh, you know a, a production company looking at sort of the intersection of food and people, and however you know, and how those things can tell different stories. And um, so he, DL, and I have worked at, at a newspaper together for a long time. And uh, when Alex brought this story, when Alex brought Alex's story, <laughs> uh, he reached out to me because I'd done a lot of still work with veterans. And so we decided that, that, you know, that because of the film company, that, we, that would be the best way to sort of address this issue and try to tell Alex's story. And that sort of, sort of, came, sort of came together organically originally as a, you know, a, a short film about a veteran farming and uh, sort of snowballed into a much more complex story from there. That complexity, though, how did y'all build that? How did you break down to become mm -hmm. friends with Alex, it, it feels like? I mean, when we first started going out there, it was he was very eager to tell his story. He he mm. was very in love with farming, in love with his girlfriend. Like, had all these birds. Like, had this vision of creating this farm that would bring back heritage breeds. Like, I mean, as you can see in the the beginning of the film, like in out next to his TV room inside his house is an incubator of like hundreds of baby birds. Um, so early on, it was a very, very easy, easy to talk to him. He really wanted to talk. Um, and then I think it was just showing up week after week after week for weeks and weeks and weeks and building that trust. And I think every documentarian wants to get to that point where you're kind of invisible, you know, that people aren't aware of the camera and, and just go through their lives without noticing you. Uh, so I think part of it was the time and the building of the trust and then I would say the complexity kind of came from us kind of paying attention that maybe something else was going on and noticing that some stories weren't adding up and having a lot of time talking with DL, like bringing the footage back. Because uh, aside from being a producer, DL also worked as our editor for most of the film. And so like processing things after we'd be at the farm, like it was almost a two hour drive. So we'd have this time in the car, Jeremy and I, to like you know, feel like something's, something else is going on here. Mm. A little shout out off camera to DL, since he is here. Yes, representing. Yay. DL. 
Um, I'm, I'm curious that so that bringing in that element into the film though is done really well. It it's just basically you sit him down and there's an interaction. We hear it mm -hmm. even. Mm -hmm. What made you guys do it that way? Because that was a very I felt like that was a moment when I watched the, at the film. I was like, this is taking a step back into something very different, and it was captivating. We, you know, we'd had a lot of questions and we'd talk to Alex sort of in a roundabout way about some things. You know, we'd, we'd ask him some things for some clarification on things. And, and we sort of kept going back. We're like, you know, some of these things are just still, like we're not sure why, you know, why they do, you know, we, we could see some factual things weren't lining up, but we also were trying to figure out like, if, if this isn't exactly like what, if we're being told one thing, but we have this paperwork that shows us another thing, like wh why is there a discrepancy? Why does Alex, you know, why does he feel the need to, to, you know, where are his stories coming from and what purpose do they serve? Mm. And, um, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd always wanted the film to be very much from Alex's perspective, to really let him tell his own story. So we felt that the best way to sort of continue that approach while also trying to gain the clarity that we needed was to just to ask him directly and to like walk through these things with him. So hopefully he could walk us and, and as, you know, and turn the audience through sort of the, um, the process of how we got from you know, from here to there and everything in, in the middle. Even though it doesn't, he doesn't seem to showcase a huge catharsis during this process, mm -hmm. I almost feel that it must have been for him. And it, 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 he's obviously changed since maybe that moment and just having you guys in his life. How have y'all felt about that impact on his life, mm -hmm. coming into his life and maybe changing everything? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we still are in touch with them very frequently. We've shared the film with them. Um, they've seen it. We've processed a lot with them. We had a very long, thoughtful phone call after they watched it to kind of talk about the parts that maybe they were, you know, felt, of course, that scene, you know, is, is a very intense scene. Um, I mean, I think our hope is that through being there and asking questions, we have been part of his journey. But at this point, a couple of years later, like things are more or less the same as you see in the film. Like some days are great and there are lovely, lovely things. And some days there's a lot of tension. And he's still, I mean, I think the big point of the film is what happens after war is a really long, nonlinear mm slow healing process and that's kind of what's still happening so we did hold a, a big place in their life showing up all the time for a couple of years and and now we're not showing up all the time but but we're still part of their life and um i don't know that we i don't know that we actually change things that mm. much for them i mean certainly i think they're different for the fact we showed up asking all these questions, but in terms of Alex's life, I think it's still very much a day-to-day, -day working through his medication, working through the farm. They're still on the farm. They're still working the farm. So I don't know. I, I don't know that we change things that dramatically by being there. That's interesting on itself, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of curious. Um, I was fascinated in those moments where he... There's a specific shot. I, I don't want to give it away, but where he obviously has something's going on in his head and he reacts to you specific. I don't know who was on camera. That interaction you don't see in documentaries often. Mm. What was going through you guys' head when there would be those type of kind of awkward moments? How, is, how did you handle that as someone behind a camera? But this guy is still very, very much a lethal weapon in very much the sense just in having weapons there and knowing how to use them. Um, I mean... I, I never felt threat. I mean, it, you know, Alex has a pretty nonchalant attitude towards yeah. firearms by a lot of people's perspective. <laughs> um, I never felt threatened by that, though. I mean, I think he, he, he I mean, I think some people would consider some of the things he does careless, but I'd never felt like, I, I don't think we ever felt like we were in danger. I mean, Alex knows what he's doing. Mm. Uh, is, does he like to joke around and have fun with it? Yes. But I never felt like that was a threat. Um, I, I grew up around with people with firearms. I, it, doesn't, it didn't bother me. I mean, he certainly has a lot more than many people, but it, it never felt threatening in that way towards us mm. uh, or towards, you know, yeah. I think also that we're together. I mean, I think that it wasn't mm. just, I mean, sometimes we would be filming alone, like we would trade off, but I think having, like, the, we definitely had developed a rapport with each other to be able to check in, like if we could tell that maybe Alex was getting tense or 
you know, needed a break or something from interviewing, we definitely, you know, one of us could be working on the equipment, one of us could be trying to calm Alex down or work with him. Uh, but like Jeremy said, I think we never felt, there were some days that were very tense, but we never felt in danger. Mm. And, and, you know, and he would sometimes he would just say, like, I'm, I'm over it, I'm not doing this anymore today. And you're mm. like, okay. You know, and that, and that was an arrangement we always sort of, we had from the beginning, like, we're gonna film until you tell us to stop. You know, up to a point. But like, if he, if he was just done for the day, sometimes he'd just be like, I'm done for the day, and he'd just go inside. I mean, it wasn't like we'd still be, you know, he would just be like, I can't do this anymore today, I gotta go take a rest, and he'd just go. And that was fine, mm -hmm. you know. Being able to showcase it here in Dallas, um, even though it's a very, um, you know, cosmopolitan city, we're still in the South, this is still, we know all about guns too here, and we're very comfortable with them as well. Being able to show that to a Southern audience, what are you guys hoping to gain? I mean, you guys are, I mean, yes, Durham's Southern roots as well, but a different Southern roots, if you will. Uh, I mean, the, you know, the purpose of the film for us is, has always been to raise awareness about the issues that we're talking about, you know, uh, you know, mental health issues with, with, with veterans, you know, just getting people to pay attention, to listen to the stories, and to try to have a better understanding of, uh, of, of, of why and how people are changed by their experiences of war, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, a southern audience or a northern audience or any audience, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's everybody's responsibility as a citizen, no matter how you feel about war, to at least pay attention, to listen, to inform yourself so we can all, you know, help in whatever way we can, you know, the people who are coming back who have had these experiences and figure out, you know, better ways for them to, you know, reintegrate and heal and sort of move on. Yeah, well, a quote I read yesterday in an article that DL shared, which I love and memorized, is this has been the longest war, but the least debated. Mm -hmm. And so I think what we're trying to hope to do with this film is like, let's get that conversation back. Like, why aren't we talking about this war? Why are we very, like, eased into just letting it happen when, like, a very tiny percent of our population are, are veterans, but it's such a tiny percent that we're so isolated from them in our cities, you know, even in our rural communities, like there's such a divide between veteran and civilian. So we're hoping that through this film, through people watching it, we can make that conversation happen again. I think it's powerful in the movie, he talks about his family's uh, history in the military and how, mm. you know, his grandfather's dad, they wouldn't talk about it though. Starting that conversation, being able to show a film that, um, has life come into itself in its own, having a baby and those conversations of how he's gonna be a father. Can y'all talk about that side of Alex? Because I thought that was such a different side I didn't expect going into this film at all. And what that was like filming that for you guys. You know, I mean, and it, it gave, it was sort of a natural timeline in a way too. You know, you get like, a, in some ways there's an advantage to have it going on, but I think it was also a really interesting experience just because, you know, because Alex had already lost one family. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, due to his experience, primarily due to his experiences in war. So seeing him not only struggle with his mental health issues and with, you know, finding some more, finding a new purpose in the world now that he was, you know, out of the military, but also trying to see if he could be a father again. And, and if he, could, you know, it was just, it, it's just another layer to sort of his complicated story of, you know, starting over. Like, what happens next? How do you create a new identity for yourself and a new life after your whole, if it's basically been, a soldier. The other thing about it too, <coughs> sorry, is that, um, you know, I feel like anybody can relate to the terror of being a new parent, you know, like that is one thing I love about this story and that I've mapped, like as we've been making this film is like, how do I, how does Alex show up in me? You know, like what are the ways? Because I think in a lot of ways he's a very challenging uh, character, you know, and, and is, but He's a very challenging character, but there's so many pieces of him that like you, one could find in relating to him, which I think is really powerful of like, if part of the purpose of the film is putting yourself in his shoes, like how do, how do you wish you were braver? You know, how do you rewrite your past to make yourself feel more connected to who you wanna be? How do you become a new parent? Like I think those are ways that we can find ourselves in the story even if we feel so different from him. Mm -hmm. Like our DL became a father during, you know, during the process of this film, which is incredible to see like how, how lives can parallel each other or find each other in similar experience. So 
um, that was also, I think, a part of the story that's really meaningful to be like, independent of everything else he's dealing with, here's a very human, relatable, universal, for people who are parents, experience. Like, holy, like, I'm about to like, be a, be a person taking care of another person, let alone taking care of myself. When he got to go do deep sea fishing, what was it like for you guys going out there with him? Because I, I love that. It's so exciting. Very rocky. <laughs> with the cameras, we're like holding on. A like. lot of unusable footage. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, it was fun. You know, I mean, I, I, I like to fish. Uh, it was a good time. You know, just go on the boat, hang out. I mean, uh, part of, I mean, I think part of the reason why anybody gets into documentary film or, you know, or photography or whatever it's like you have to tell stories you have to like hang out and do stuff you know I mean it sounds so simple but that is part of the fun of it you know you have these experiences with somebody and you learn about them and you also just get to hang out on the boat and fish I mean you know it's, it's not it's not a bad way to spend an afternoon well um can you give me a, a um kind of an explanation of what's next for this film and you know some good news about where people can see this film uh so we are you know we'll, we'll be premiering tonight here mm -hmm. Uh, we're still, you know, tr trying to line up some more film festivals. Uh, uh, the internet, uh, ITVS was a, you know, a, a funding partner of ours, so the, f the film will have a broadcast version that will show on public television sometime, probably next year, we hope. We don't have a specific date, so, uh, but it will be out in the world on public television at some point. Are you talks like an hour block? Is that what you're trying to mm -hmm. cut into? Yes. Yep. Yes, right. which the process of which we've already begun. <laughs> right, we're doing that yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thank you guys for bringing this film uh, to Dallas International Film Festival. Um, I was blown away, and I can't wait to see what people see in this film. It's, it was very moving. It was very good. Thank, thank you, you for you having so us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you.